Monster Hunter World's weapon progression paths are much simpler than previous games, but there are some standout paths you may or may not notice. This guide series is going to focus on weapon upgrades to take you through low rank and high rank as painlessly as possible for each weapon type. Obviously, since we're talking about flying through the early game, we don't want to sit and farm monsters for days. You will need to farm a bit following these paths, but hopefully not too much. The majority of the parts also come from easier monsters, which should make progress fairly painless. You need to hoard everything you come across. If you see a mining node, hit it. Bone pile, take everything. The last thing you want to do is have to go randomly find some bones or minerals for an upgrade. Everything you gather will be useful, and you'll save time by gathering as much as you can along the way. Any questionable materials, I will be providing where to get them as we talk about the upgrades themselves. A last word of advice, always capture monsters if you can. They yield better rewards than killing or carving. To capture a monster, damage it until you see a skull by their icon on the minimap. Now you have to lay a pitfall or shock trap and lure them into it. Then get close and throw two tranquilizers which will knock out the monster and end the battle. You can wait until monsters return to their nest to sleep and drop a free trap on them. Capturing is always recommended, especially for harder fights, since even when a monster is in critical health, it will still put up a rather lengthy battle before going down. Hammer is in a bit of a rough spot. The recommended path is harder to make than the previous weapons. They have really low sharpness and don't benefit that much from elemental damage, instead favoring massive raw damage. Unfortunately, that huge raw damage is usually offset by negative affinity. The short answer for this guide is, make the Baroth or Anjanath hammer and with its insane raw damage, you'll crush most of the game. Now for the long answer. The Iron Hammer 1 you start with will be acceptable for the first missions, but your goal is to get a Bone Bludgeon 1 and upgrade it to a Bone Bludgeon 2 as soon as possible. This will require a total of 3 Monster Bone S which can be found from bone piles in the ancient forest, carved from monsters, and as quest rewards. The game hands these out to you like candy so it shouldn't be long before you get them. You'll use the Bone Bludgeon 2 for the first set of large monsters including the Great Jagras and the Kulu Yaku. If you're lucky, after the first hunt with the Kulu Yaku you'll have the required 1 Kulu Yaku Beak, 2 Kulu Yaku Hides, and 3 Kulu Yaku Scales to upgrade your Bone Bludgeon 2 into a Kulu Beak 1. This is optional as it's a dead end path, but it will be a good bridge to the Anjanath Hammer. If you don't want to fight Kulu Yaku multiple times to get enough materials to upgrade, the Bone Bludgeon 2 will be acceptable to take out the next target, the Pookie Pookie, but the Kulu Beak 1 will be significantly easier. After the Pookie Pookie, you'll want to complete your mandatory assignments of hunting a Baroth in the Wildspire Wastes. After beating Baroth, you'll want to make another Bone Bludgeon 1 and upgrade it to a Bone Bludgeon 2 by using 3 Monster Bone S. If you're lucky, after a single hunt you'll have the required materials to upgrade it to a Carapace Sludge 1 by using 1 Baroth Claw, 3 Baroth Shells, and 2 Baroth Ridges. Damage wise, this is pretty similar to a Kulu Beak 1, but it does provide a defense bonus if you're really struggling with the game. You'll have to make this regardless, even if you don't use it immediately, because it builds into the Anjanath Hammer and it can be upgraded further through low and high rank. Then complete Sinister Shadows of the Swamp to hunt a Jiratotus. Then you'll have to fight a Toby Kadashi. Our next hunt is Anjanath, which is the first really threatening monster you've come across. The Carapace Sledge 1 and Kulu Beak 1 will be fairly equal damage wise, but again, the defense bonus from the Carapace Sledge could be beneficial to you here, especially if you're new. This is where things kind of blur in the hammer progression, but it's your choice of what to do here. The Baroth tree and Anjanath tree are extremely similar. They have roughly equivalent raw, but the Anjanath has bonus fire damage. The Anjanath hammer has minus 20% affinity, whereas the Baroth has minus 10%. I'm gonna go with the Anjanath hammer as the superior path overall, but the Baroth path will be much easier to farm. After defeating a single Anjanath, hopefully you have the required materials to upgrade your Carapace Sledge 1 into a Blazing Hammer 1 by using 2 Anjanath Fangs, 3 Anjanath Scales, and 1 Flame Sack. The Anjanath Fangs are likely to be the limiting factor here. They must be carved or as a reward from breaking Anjanath's face. At the start I told you to capture where you can, but Anjanath is probably the exception to that. Fangs are rare from my experience. If you're really lucky here, you'll also get a plate. You will need this for an upgrade in the future, so you should consider hanging onto it instead of using it to build the Anjanath chest armor, even though it's tempting. The Anjanath hammer is by far the strongest per hit hammer you can have at this point, and that's exactly what we want. The negative affinity will cause some hits to do less damage, but overall the damage is still extremely high. Since these weapons start with negative affinity, boosting affinity to zero or positive will provide massive damage output gains. Getting skills like Critical Eye and especially Weakness Exploit will provide huge dividends in damage output. Fire Elemental Damage will help against some of the monsters, but overall, by the end of low rank, most of the monsters you fight are actually immune to it. The Desire Sensor was in full swing for me here, and I just couldn't get any fangs after seven hunts. For the remaining parts of this guide, I will be using the Baroth path, but I I generally believe the Anjanath set is superior and will be recommending that, as long as you're willing to farm the fangs. 
After defeating Zora Magdaros, don't worry, it's a set piece and you can't really lose, you'll gain access to the Coral Highlands. In the Coral Highlands, you can mine to get Dragonite Ore. Mine 3 as soon as possible if you prefer the Baroth Path. Then you should upgrade your Carapace Sledge 1 into a Carapace Sledge 2 by using 3 Dragonite Ore, 2 Baroth Claw, 1 Baroth Tail, and 3 Kestodon Shells. The Baroth Tail can be difficult as you can't cut tails with a hammer, but you can get them as carving rewards. Continue progressing until you've defeated Paolumu, which you should make short work of as he's weak to fire and the absurd raw damage of the Anjaneth Hammer. Then you'll descend into the Rotten Vale, take out Radaban. Continue progressing and you'll have to take out Legania. Legania is also moderately weak to fire, so that's a bonus of using the Anjanath Hammer. You'll have to take out a Rathalos and a Diablos as standard progression, and they gatekeep the final upgrade tiers for both of the Baroth and Anjanath Hammers in low rank. If you're using the Anjanath Path, kill Rathalos first for the Rathalos Marrow, then upgrade your Blazing Hammer 1 into a Blazing Hammer 2 by using 1 Rathalos Marrow, 4 Anjanath Fangs, 1 Anjanath Nosebone, and 1 Anjanath Tail. Again, you obviously can't cut tails with a hammer, but you should be able to carve them or get them as rewards. If you're using Baroth, kill Diablos first for the Diablos shells. Then upgrade your Carapace Sludge 2 into a Carapace Sludge 3 by using 3 Diablos shells, 4 Baroth claws, 2 Baroth scalps, and 3 Monster Bone Plus. Monster Bone Plus are available as rewards from any 5 star monster, including Legania, Odogaron, Rathalos, and Diablos. You'll likely have enough by the time you beat Diablos. Take out any remaining monsters in low rank until you can take on Zora Magdaros. After beating the Zora Magdaros set piece and killing a deceptively strong Pookie Pookie, you'll gain access to high rank quests. Congratulations, the baby gloves are coming off. Our immediate goal in high rank is a weapon upgrade to compensate for the increased health of monsters with a long term goal of bringing our sharpness to the next level, which unfortunately won't happen for a while. Since both of these weapons have negative affinity, you should look into getting the Kulu Yaku Headpiece Alpha as it provides weakness exploit. This is an extremely easy high rank armor upgrade and will largely offset the feeble hits, granting a huge net damage increase. At the start of high rank, you'll be able to free hunt both Anjanath and Baroth in the Ancient Forest and Wildspire Waste respectively. The Baroth Hammer actually is higher raw than the Anjanath Hammer for a very brief period here as well as being easier to upgrade with more common materials. Upgrade your Carapace Sledge 3 into a Baroth Breaker 1 by using 2 Baroth Claw Plus, 3 Baroth Carapace, 2 Baroth Ridge Plus, and 5 Kestodon Carapace. Ideally, you'll use this to hunt Anjanath for the required upgrade materials, otherwise, your Blazing Hammer 2 will be adequate. Upgrade your Blazing Hammer 2 into an Anja Striker 1 by using 4 Anjanath Fang Plus, 5 Anjanath Scale Plus, 3 Inferno Sack, and 1 Anjanath Plate. The plate makes this not ideal. They're quite rare and may require many hunts to get. It's one of the reasons the Baroth Hammer is just easier to make. These weapons will have to tide you over until you reach the Elder's Recess as each path will require upgrade materials from there. The Baroth path requires Gastodon Carapaces. These are found on Gastodons, which are the local herbivores for the Elder's Recess. The Anjanath path requires a Fire Cell Stone found while mining in the Elder's Recess. You'll also need to hunt a Diablos for the Baroth path and a Rathalos for the Anjanath path, so you have to pick your poison. Upgrade your Baroth Breaker 1 into a Baroth Breaker 2 by using 3 Diablos Carapace, 4 Baroth Claw Plus, 3 Baroth Carapace, and 5 Gastodon Carapace. The Anjanath path will gain a sliver of blue sharpness which will be a bonus in the following hunts. Upgrade from your Anja Striker 1 to an Anja Striker 2 by using 2 Rathalos Medulla, 5 Anjanath Fang Plus, 4 Anjanath Pelt Plus, and 1 Fire Cell Stone. Finally, there's actually a third option. It's significantly weaker damage-wise, but actually has some reasonable blue sharpness which the other two options suffer from. You'll need to get to the Elder's Recess here because you need to mine Fusium Ore. To get here, you'll need to go through the Ore Path, which is Iron Hammer 1, into Iron Hammer 2, into Iron Hammer 3, into Iron Demon 1, into Iron Demon 2, into Iron Demon 3, and finally the Iron Arc Demon 1. This will lead into arguably the best hammer in the game, so don't worry about wasting materials here. It only uses ores and monster bones, which you should have in spades at this point if you've been diligent about hitting every mining node you come across. Upgrading here will tide you over until you finally face off against Nergigante. Normally I'd be telling you to upgrade your weapon here if you got lucky with materials after killing Nergigante. There is an optional upgrade if you're using the Broth Breaker 2 where you can upgrade it to a Broth Breaker 3 by using 1 Nergigante Horn Plus, 5 Broth Claw Plus, 5 Broth Ridge Plus, and 1 Wavern Gem, which you can find from hunting large monsters like Broth, Rataban, Giratotus, etc. However, what you want to do here is farm Nergigante until you can build his weapon, the Nurgle Crusher. It's just miles ahead of the final tier Broth or Anjanath Hammers, and that's before it gets upgraded to its final form of the Obliteration's Footfall. It has a good amount of blue sharpness, high raw damage, neutral affinity, and a bit of dragon element, as well as Elder Seal. Say goodbye to the weapons that carried you through to this point, they've served their purpose. 
Go through the ore path from Iron Hammer 1 to Iron Arc Demon 1 and upgrade it into a Nurgle Crusher by using 3 Nurgigante Talons, 4 Nurgigante Regrowth Plates, 2 Nurgigante Tails, and 2 Nurgigante Carapace. Congratulations, you now have a weapon that's completely capable of getting you through the rest of the game and arguably the second best hammer. Proceed through with hunting the remaining Elder Dragons. After taking out Xenogevia, you can upgrade the Nurgle Crusher one more time into an Obliteration's Footfall by using 2 Xenogevia Horns, 5 Nurgigante Horns, 5 Nurgigante Talons, and 1 Nurgigante Gem. The gem may take a lot of time unless you're really lucky, but regardless of that final upgrade, this will be one of the hardest hitting hammers in the game. Thanks for watching. If you thought this video was helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Guides for the rest of the weapons are on the way.